Hey everyone, so in this demo we're going to be focusing on Canister, which is an open source framework or project that is focused on application level data management for your Kubernetes applications. So here's some information, canister.io is where you're going to find all of the information. It runs within your Kubernetes cluster, protects your application data basically with, with what... Um, we also with so it has the case of blueprints. Blueprints gives us the the ability to dive into your application. If we take a look at what one of those blueprints looked like quickly, so it has leverages a, the Kubernetes API. Then it has its action sets to be able to use Kube Task. And then here you can see that we're what we're doing is going inside of the the data service, triggering application consistency using native tools, MySQL dump in this example, and then we're offloading that using Kandu, which is another tool set that comes through with, with the canister operator and pushes that out into an S3 target object storage. Target could be NFS as well. So what we want to do is we want to, and, and with the same vein of this, we've got the ability to restore obviously that data as well. So I've also written something similar to that and it walks through actually adding the, the canister helm repository, the net creating the namespace, deploying that as well and, and all of that good stuff. And that's really what we want to focus on in this in this session. So I've cleared everything down. So if we do a um, kubectl get namespace, you're gonna see that we have very much a, a fresh a fresh build, a fresh Kubernetes cluster. I'm actually using K3D locally on my on my machine. So I've already ha added the um, the canister Helm repository. So next up, we want to create that that uh, canister namespace. So create namespace canister, and then we want to deploy that using Helm. So I want to take the latest version which I think is 67, maybe 68 now, but let's go with 67. And with that, you can see how quick that went. And if we go and take a look, get pods, namespace, uh, canister, remember what I'm actually doing. Um, okay, so we can see that that's now deployed. And if we head on over here, so once we've once we have canister deployed, we should now show the custom resource definitions. And this is basically an enabling us to leverage the Kubernetes API. And this is gonna show action sets, blueprints, and profiles. So we can do that by running this command here. And if we hit that, you can see that we're, we're gonna create, or we've got the ability now to create three custom resource definitions. One is our action sets. Action sets provide us the ability to actually run the task so whether that be a restore or a backup or it could be anything outside of the the box but really what we're focusing on is the data management tasks blueprints are what i showed you on the github repository so that gives us the ability to hook into the data service to provide a, the the native tool set to be able to protect that those data services and then profiles is where do you want to store that data i.e object storage, AWS S3, etc. Okay, so that's canister deployed, but now we want to actually, let's go and deploy um, a MySQL environment as well. Now, I'm pretty sure uh, I also had the Bitnami yet. So let's create a, another namespace called MySQL test. And let's go ahead and I'm gonna use the default or very simply an unsecure because I'm showing you what that looks like. And what this is gonna do is go and deploy that MySQL test with, or MySQL from the Helm chart within our MySQL test namespace. And while that's running and deploying, I've also set these environment variables. So I'm gonna go and use CanCTL, which is a CLI tool that also comes with um, canister and can be separately downloaded for your like a binary for your machine and you'll find that also at the github location and basically what we're going to do is we're going to create a profile an s3 compliant profile but let's clear this and i'll i'll show you what else 
is available within there. So this gives us the ability to create our profiles. It obviously gives you the ability to validate some of those things, but let's do a can CTL create and then we'll get to see what we've actually, so we can create our action sets and our profiles. And again, if I just drill into the profile, cause that's what we're gonna do now is we have the ability to create an Azure profile, a GCP profile or S3 compliant. S3 compliant gives us the ability to use AWS or S3 compliant or S3 capable compatible storage. So for the purpose of the demo, I'm actually going to create a profile of S3 compliant. I'm gonna use those environment variables that I've already got added in the US East 2 region, which is actually gonna be using AWS S3, and I wanna create it for my MySQL test. Now, we could have different profiles for different workloads, but for this, let's let's create, can CTL create profile, profile, S3 compliant, and let's see if that fixes it. So you can see that we're creating the secret and the profile. And if I now, like you saw that it's created, but if I do a cube CTL get profile minus N my SQL test. So let's see what profiles we have available to us within our MySQL test namespace. And you can see that I have an S3 profile D4ZRN. And then the next stage is, okay, so we've got MySQL deployed. Let's just check whether that, what that looks like now. So K get namespace. So we should have a MySQL test. So let's just double check that we have our pod up and running. Okay, all good. But now we need to have that hook, that data service hook into our application. So Canister uses blueprints to define these database specific workloads and open source blueprints are available for several popular applications. You saw them in the GitHub. It's also simple to customize existing blueprints or add new ones. Basically what we're doing is we're providing a way of being able to automate that hook into your data service to hook into whatever that may be. Now we're using MySQL dump, but think about other tasks that you could potentially perform here as well. So what we're going to do is we're gonna pull down the, the blueprint from that GitHub location, and it's gonna be MySQL blueprint. In fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kubectl create minus F, create minus F. You can see there that I'm already pulling that down and I'm putting it into our canister namespace. And if we were to then kubectl get blueprint and then check our canister and if we had multiple data services if we had the mysql if we had postgres if we had xyz we would obviously pull them all down into our our canister um, namespace as well okay so now we want to add some data into our newly created environment now it might be that you already have a test and dev environment that you're able to do this on but for the purposes of this, I'm going to actually exec in and I'm going to authenticate using the very trusty secure password that we had before. And we should be on to MySQL. And with this, we're going to just quickly create a database called test. We're going to use that test. We're going to insert some, some values and then we're going to exit out of that if I didn't just select it all. So let's just quickly grab all of that text. Let's that doesn't seem like it worked how I wanted it to. So let's just log back into that MySQL. Probably do it individually so that we can actually see it. So Let's create the database called test. Okay, so that already exists. Let's say use test. Uh, 
let's just see if anything was actually added to that from pets yeah okay so we want to insert into pets value of this so let's do that surely I need to create a table let me This would help if I took this line of text and let's quickly add that in there. So let's update my readme and then let's insert this line of text, this command. And if we then go and select that, we should see our data. Okay. so quick demo without it being a MySQL demo is we've added some data to our database. You can see it here that we have a pet named Puffball, an owner of Diane, it's a hamster, etc. Right. Then we want to be able to create a action set that gives us the ability to offload that into our object storage. Uh, we do have data in our database at this point this is to show what it will look like blah 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 okay so let's just head back and let's get that profile again because we're going to need that specific random profile that we created in our let me just update that as well on the fly to then create our action set backup job we need to take the profile name and add to the profile in the following command okay so you can see here, again, we're going to use canctl. But what we want to do as part of that is we need to change this profile to match that D4ZRN. And that's then going to create a backup of that or an action set. And if we go through with that, like next out, uh, we can see that action set has been created. You can see here 11 seconds ago, and then we want to see actually did it work. So by being able to go into using a kubectl describe that action set. In fact, what we need to do is we need to change that action set to JTLR7. And you can see here that the executed action backup, executing phase, updated action set. Now, what we can do is we can jump over to our AWS, our S3 management. So this is what the profile looks like. You can see that we've already created a folder called MySQL backups, and there should be MySQL tests. Some of these are um, previously um, created snapshots, but you can see here that we have a 28 for the 9th, 2021, which is today. And you can see here that we have that native See my SQL dump of all of our data. So let's head back and let's jump back into our, our my SQL piece. Let's clear this. So we have a good backup, but now we're going to simulate a failure. Let's authenticate back into my SQL. Let's see how this goes as just one block of text but what it should so you can see there in here we've dropped that test database okay so let's exit that and now in order for us to restore the data from our AWS S3 profile we need to create another action set but this time it's a restore action set and note again that your action set will be named different to what I have below okay so and in order to be able to do that, we're basically restoring from the backup. So again, if we go up and we go and take a look at what that backup name is, we can then use canctl 
to create that. But what we need to do is we need to change this to our JT LR7. And now we've created that, we could go and let's see what that action set actually looks like again. Make sure it's there. You can see that our backup is there. And our restore backup is also now in play. We can also go and describe that. So let's do a, let's grab this bit. And let's add in this bit. And by the time we've done this, actually the data will be back and restored because it was only a, a table. So again, for the third time, let's now go and jump into our MySQL instance. And let's, in fact, this will let us see everything that we need to see. Okay, so we can see that the test database is now back. We can see that the pets table is there. And we can see that our information in that table is also there. And that's a very quick way of looking into what Canister is capable of from a MySQL point of view. But as I said before, if we go back into our examples, our stable examples, then we've got the ability to do that with Mongo. We've got that the ability to do it with Postgres, with AWS RDS. So think about external data services as well. But ultimately, this is going to give you that operator function of being able to capture the data in a consistent manner so that you can then use that um, as, a, as a restore point, either back into itself like we just did there, but also take that dump and put it into a, a maybe a test and dev environment as well. Hopefully that was useful. Any questions, let us know. Uh, yeah, be happy to do so. And any more information that you want on Canister, check out canister.io. And yeah, it'll give you a lot more information around that.